We've been working on our root cellar project. Would you like to see what's behind the door? Stay tuned. Well, the first job was for Donnie to do the cleaning. Remember, I have a little problem with spiders. So he cleaned up all the trash and boards and stuff that the previous owners had probably had down there for years. And when I went down there, I didn't see a single spider. I didn't see any cleaning it up either. Well, I'm happy. That's all that counts. To begin the shelving project, we went to the sawmill in the forest to get two inch pine planks. We got 10 inch widths on one side and 20 inch on the other. We wanted to accommodate different size baskets and storage boxes. We used heavy concrete blocks in between the shelves to give strength and also so we didn't have to drill into the wall or have a back to the shelves, remembering that we wanted good circular ventilation in the room. And that day, fortunately, I had help from my grandson, Tice. Not only are the shelves strong, but I think they're attractive. I think they're really attractive too. And as soon as we got the shelves ready, I started storing some food down there. Well, I'm heading down to the root cellar to get some shopping done. We need some things for dinner. Okay, I'm gonna start off with some potatoes. We're gonna have roast and baked potatoes for dinner. Now, we have some tomatoes from our garden still in here. I wanna see how they're doing. Here's the last one we did in a paper bag. Pretty good. Good, looks good. Let's see how it tastes. We'll find out at dinner. Let me check all these other ones. Now he looks pretty good. Let's see which ones are the ripest. We might be able to save some for Christmas. We might be eating fresh tomatoes on Christmas. He's got a few marks, but it looks okay. Let's see if any of them are going bad. So those were completely green? They were completely green. We're gonna have him. Let's see, two more. Oh, wait a minute, you said him. How do you know it's a him and not her? I don't know, it feels like a him. Yeah, I mean, look at him. Perfect little tomatoes. Huh. Okay, we'll have some tomatoes on the side for dinner. Okay, we still have so some spaghetti squash down here. Next week, next week one night, we're gonna have spaghetti squash. Nice. So the temperature in this room we just checked is 57. We wish it was a little bit cooler. Yeah, the humidity is like 90 percent, which is good. So we're gonna so we gotta work on venting it somehow. Yeah. To get some cold air down here. Yeah, but so got the shelves in place and. I also need to get the lighting going, don't I? Yes, you do. Can't have this thing forever. <laughs> but hey, no junk and no spiders. No, I haven't seen any spiders. And there's only a few things in here this year, but by next year, I hope to have it loaded with stuff from our garden. Nice. So to begin the lighting project, we experimented with different types of lighting, with direct and indirect lighting. We had temporary extension cords. We decided we would go with indirect lighting. So I tied a line into the basement circuit, lighting circuit, and I ran a conduit, which you can see on the left side of the stairs going down underground. And we used underground rated wire and put them in the conduit. So inside the room, we used LED light fixtures. These are up lights or directional lights. So some of them shined up on the wall and some on the wall. I think it came out with a, a beautiful effect that highlighted the features of the stone and the brick and gave a beautiful soft light down onto the baskets and, and the food. This is a 180 year old stone wall and you can see we've lost some stone and some of the mortar, the brickwork, and I also have to patch some concrete there. So I have some leftover mortar from another project. Uh, I'm not a mason, this isn't a how-to, uh, but I think I can manage to get this done and we'll move forward. So I'll catch you in a few minutes. Place a little, just put a little mortar on my hawk here. I have a repointing tool and just slide it up in place. I think it's important to slide over to help finish provide strength to the, the mortar and uh, yeah not a quality masonry work but I think for here it's going to work okay now this is going to be interesting getting enough mortar in there to refill 
Um, fortunately, I can't just gum it all up with more mortar. You're not supposed to. Mortar is supposed to hold things together. So we have a stone here, which I think it has white on the outside, but I think it was part of this wall. So I'm going to put that in there, and I've got a couple other stones that I'm going to slide in. The trick is how am I going to get enough mortar in around it to make it work. So um, I'm going to finish patching this up, and then I'm going to make another load of mortar, and then we'll, we'll move on with the tricky stuff. Okay, loading up the hawk to do some of the trickier stone work. I already put some mortar in way deep into the wall to add strength, and now I need to do the finish work by adding the stones and doing the finish mortar around the front of the wall. Probably to an experienced mason it's painful to, to watch, but um, in the end I think it came out pretty good and I know the wall is definitely going to be stronger. Here is the patchwork I did for the concrete floor is missing and then here it is all dried. And the mortar for the wall and I think we did a pretty good job matching the mortar with the finished mortar, the old mortar. I need to put a door on here. Um, part of the reason is the difference in the humidity levels. We want to have this more humid down here than up in the larder area. So often we can keep this down to about 90% humidity and then it's in the 50s or 60 up here in, in the larder. But I need a door here and then I'm also gonna have pipe in some air from the outside so we can get it colder than, it's been around 55, 58. I think we'd like to get it closer to 45, 45 to 50. So it might leave, need a little bit of ventilation. So we got these really neat walls. I don't want to drill them, you know, normally I just use tap cons or something and drill them, put a wood frame around it, but I'm trying to do this whole project without damaging any of the walls. So we're going to use some wide pressure treated wood, so a combination of friction and uh, gravity, the way I place the boards, and some compression. So I'll do two rings around and I think it'll make a pretty durable uh, frame for the door. So it's uh, the part that's a little freaky is uh, <laughs> is the floor is dirt. I took the mat away that goes here, but just digging in a dirt floor in your basement is something that I'm not used to yet. So <laughs> but it's pretty cool. Yeah, but it's just a kind of a clay um, that. So I'll, I'll use that to help for with compression, and I have to dig out. Uh, the place to put a board so that it's level with the floor and it'll keep both posts spread apart. So that's what I'm going to do next. And what door are you going to use? Yeah, I, we have a door from the farm here. Huh? We're use, a so. pretty cool old door. Yeah, it's original to the farm. may not be original to this point here. I don't know, but we'll show it to you later. Exciting. We have the door frame in. It looks pretty solid. And you know, what are the chances that a an old 180-year-old brick and stone is perfectly square? Yeah, no. So now I have to shim the frame up. Now I'll put a little trim around it, but it seems like the door is working okay. And now I just have to do some shim work. Okay, we have the door frame in and I shimmed up the uh, inner frame. It needs a little bit of trim around the outside, but we're going to test to see if we have a good solid door. Oh, I love that squeak. It's got an old squeak for an old door. Perfect. Solid, good close. Now I got to put a latch on the outside here. And then the big thing is, uh, do we paint the door? This is an original door to the farm. Do we leave it just as it is or do we paint it red 
a dark red like most of the other doors here. So I don't know. It's so dark in that tunnel. I almost feel like we need something bright. We'll have to see. Yeah. Think well, about that one. Okay. Well, good job, dear. Thank you. Now that the project is finished, we're constantly monitoring the temperature and humidity in the root cellar. What we found is the humidity is even higher now that the air does not mix with the basement. So we're in, typically in the high 90s in humidity, and the temperatures range from about 50 degrees up to 55 degrees. So we're pretty happy with that. We, we would love to have it maybe another 5 degrees cooler. And that's the last part of the project that we don't have figured out yet. And I would love input from anybody that has experience in doing um, ventilation systems for root cellars. I was fortunate enough to get my hands on a thermal imaging camera to look at the temperature in the root cellar. This black and white picture gives you the perspective and then it changes to the infrared. If you look at the purple area, that's the coldest, and you'd expect that because it's closest to the ground. And the orange is sort of the mid-temperature, so there's really only a variance of 3 to maybe 4 degrees. So the bottom line is that these builders and designers really knew what they were doing almost 200 years ago. Finished root cellar. I love it. Plenty of shelving, plenty of boxes. I love the way the lighting turned out. It just makes it feel, I don't know, really cool. Now, the only thing missing is a lot of food. <laughs> so my project now is for next year to grow enough food in the garden to fill this room up. That's a challenge I am looking forward to taking on to fill my beautiful root cellar.